Hi, Steve. Thank you so much for coming to BizTalk. How are you? Good, thank you. Good morning, Max. My pleasure. I'm calling you from Tokyo. So for you, it's not that morning. <laughs> no, it's six, six in the evening now. All right. It's almost finished the day. We just get started. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, before talking about your venture, please give an introduction to yourself. Okay. So my name is Steve Bittinger. I'm the founder and CEO of Sky Beauty. I'm an American. I've been working with cosmetics for more than three decades. And I've been living in Japan for most of that period, but working worldwide with cosmetics. I also have a co-founder, Gabriel, who's not here today. He's a British, and he worked in China for about 20 years and is a very fluent in Mandarin. So together, that's our management team. Thank you, Steve. So let's talk about Sky Beauty. Okay. So first, I'll explain the, the brand name Sky. Uh, we take inspiration from uh, a blue sky on a sunny day. And my purpose in making the brand is to generate feelings for our consumers to be happy about life and worry-free. So on this page, I'll give a little bit of an overview. I've already introduced myself and Gabriel. But the first point I want to make is we are a direct-to-consumer brand, or D2C. And that means that we will primarily sell uh, with e-commerce, such as Shopify, third-party platforms like uh, Amazon, Rakuten, Tmall, and China. Our focus for the brand is clean and sustainable beauty, which at the moment are two of the hottest trends for beauty brands around the world, not just Japan and China, but US, Europe, India, and so forth. Our plan for the brand is ambitious. We're going to try in the next three to five years to go to 10 or more markets with multiple product categories. And we've designed the brand to be very scalable and capital efficient. So we're starting in Japan as our first market, and we expect that China with cross-border e-commerce will be second. Our initial products include two. We're making hair care in Italy, and this will be marketed as natural, organic, vegan, and eco-friendly. And this is a very uh, broad target. We're targeting women and men, young and old. And that would include families with children three and up. Our second product is our hair color. And this we're producing in Japan. And we have a value proposition which has three points. The first is to do salon quality at home. The second is to add in a kind of Olaplex type damage care. And the third is to simplify the color choice for consumers which makes it easier for them and less stressful. And in this case, we're going to target women in the home color segment, women who are already dyeing their hair at home. Typically, they'd be 30, 40, 50 years old. We've done a lot to de-risk the brand before our launch. We've arranged world-class manufacturing, logistics, e-commerce. We've produced enough inventory, which is fully paid, to last most of our first year of sales. So today I'm here to introduce the brand and we're seeking a pre-seed round. The majority of that money, the use of funds would be to cover advertising and promotion this next year. So for the first product is the hair care. Here, as I mentioned, the trend is for clean and sustainable beauty. The problem though is if you want to have something which is good to people and good to the environment, how do you do that without sacrificing performance? You still have to have the functional 
benefits. So what we did was we partnered with a group in Italy to make a shampoo and treatment, which are very multifunctional, very versatile for hair and body. Our partner has an organic farm. So we're using flax and mullein from their farm. The formulations are all plant-based. So we add in argan oil from Morocco, sweet almond oil, many other things. The treatment itself is up to 95% nature derived. Um, the farm is organic. They have followed the United Nations goals for sustainable um, development. We have vegan certification from Italy. And then the bottle and tube uh, are made with a uh, sugar cane, which is very, uh, it's a renewable resource and very eco-friendly. Here I'm showing you a picture of the shampoo and treatment. So the shampoo, as I mentioned, is multifunctional. So you can use it to wash your hair, to deep cleanse the scalp, or even as a body wash. And then the treatment, which is like a conditioner, it also has multiple uses. So you can condition the hair. You can leave it on for three to five minutes, uh, like a hair mask. And you can also use it as a uh, body conditioner. And the, the tube and the bottle are very tall and thin which makes them very uh, small for Japanese baths and showers. And they're also good for getting out the last drops because you can turn the bottle upside down. Our second product is hair color. And this is more of a kind of blue ocean opportunity between salons and home color. So about half the market in Japan goes to the salon, half does it at home. And it's changed a bit since uh, COVID. But basically, it's two main segments. And with the internet, we can go direct to the consumer. And the reason why we're starting in Japan is there's many favorable market characteristics. And in particular, women have a very high penetration. And this is held for about 40 years. So from 20s to 70, that's 75% of all women are dyeing their hair. For older guys like my age, it's probably more than 50% and young men, 25. So again, it's a wonderful market for hair dye. But the problem you have if you're dyeing your hair, especially if you're doing it at home, is people love to go to the salon, get the benefit of the stylist, but that takes time and money. If you're doing it at home, the cheap boxes that you would find in the drugstore, the quality is very low. And everybody, whether it's salons or at home, are worried about damage and irritation. So our solution is uh, three parts. So we do salon quality at home, and that means you get higher quality, higher shine than you would with the home brands, but it's at half the cost of going to the salon and stylus. The second part is we simplify the choice. And this is kind of an insider learning uh, from the Asian market. Asian hair is different because there's one phenotype. It's black and coarse. So it's very different than, say, where you're in Europe or I'm an American where you have black hair, brown hair, blonde hair, red hair. In Japan, it's black. And we know from the home market that 80, 90% of the home sales come from black, dark brown, brown. So we've chosen three very deep natural brown colors to simplify the choice. And there's a hidden benefit for the company. It's a very uh, capital efficient way to get high sales per SKU. And then the last part of our kind of USP is the Plex Damage Care. And this is an idea inspired by the Olaplex brand in the US. They're now seven, eight years old. They're one of the hottest brands in the world. They did an IPO about a year ago. And what they did was they noticed that when you bleach your hair or you do a permanent or you dye your hair, you're breaking the bonds inside the hair. So they created a new molecule that prevents most of the damage caused by the hair dye. So in our case, we're working with another group out of Milan, Italy, that's made their own version of flax. So again, you would mix this in with the hair dye and it prevents most of the damage. And in our case, it's still relatively new in Japan with salons, and we'll be the first to do it for home use in Japan. And this will give you a picture of each hair color set 
will have two tunes. One is the color and the other is the accent in our developer. This page, I won't go through the details, but as I've said, we de-risked the brand before launch. And in the last few months in Japan, we've done a soft launch. So at the top of the page, I list our contract manufacturers. In particular, we have Nika in Japan and Kimon and HSA in Italy. We set up the logistics, the e-commerce. We started doing some posting on Instagram, trying out key opinion leaders. In November, we had an event. We had three speakers, invited about 200 women, mostly women, some men. And this included customers and KOLs and some media. We've done things like get our licensing for Japan, including quasi-drug, trademarks in certain markets. We produced our inventory, and now we're raising our pre-seed three round. I'll just give you a feeling for the brand, the kind of look and feel. On this page, what I'd like to highlight is, although we didn't win, we were nominated for a Sustainable Cosmetic Award in Japan, and that was in particular for the hair treatment. So that will really help us both in terms of building brand awareness, PR in the media, certain retailers will ask if they can sell our brand. This is the event poster for our event in November. And we had three speakers. One was actually a French woman who speaks full in Japanese and her business is kind of a confidence building coach, which fits in with one of the keywords of our brand. The woman in the center I picked because she owns her own skincare brand and kind of serves as an example of not only an expert in the field, but a woman who's successful with her business. And the one on the right works for a cosmetic review site, which in Japan is called At Cosme. Could you call me a word of mouth? So they do cosmetic reviews. And her particular job is to focus on uh, being vegan, SDGs, the sustainable development goals. So it was a very successful event. I'll skip our backgrounds, but we are um, very well equipped to uh, grow our brand and meet our sales goals. The money that we're going to use will last us this next month, next year. Uh, the majority of it will be used for advertising and promotion. In addition, our first year sales goal, and I've actually lowered it to just $1 million for year one, that will generate a gross margin of about 75%. So we will be generating free cash. I mentioned in the beginning that we're going to try to do 10 to 15 markets with multiple categories. And of course, this is a projection or hypothetical, but it's possible I might even do that with Japan alone and the hair color. But again, we're going to try and do 10 plus markets. I'm going to try and grow it from zero to 60 million in five years. And my target is to get to about a 20% operating margin. And just as a rule of thumb in our business with cosmetics, even if brands are losing money, they don't usually value it on EBITDA. In the cosmetics for the last 20 or so years, typically it's a, a multiple of sales. And as a rule of thumb, five times sales. So if we get to 60 million in five years, company might be worth $300 million. And I just mentioned at the bottom some, as a footnote, there are for the D2C hair color, two success cases in the US, one of which is now a unicorn. The other was uh, they sold half the company to Henkel out of Germany. And then we do have one competitor here in Japan, which serves as a proof of concept. But they're going after order made or custom color we, like Madison Reed, are going after pre-made, which is less capital intensive, easier to scale. On this page, I want to give you an idea. So when I say I want to go to 60 million, what does that mean? Well, the Japan market alone, in total, all products, is about $40 billion. Our year five figure of 60 million is actually close to zero, but I put less than 1% to you can just lock in your mind what that means. And even if, for example, we were to get 1% of the Japan home hair color market, 
that alone would generate $60 million. I mentioned at the bottom, China and the US, which are the number one and two markets in the world, they're each at about 100 billion. So this will give you a feeling of what it would take for us to grow to 60 million in five years, which is my first kind of long-term target. That would be basically a tiny slice of several markets. So that's my introduction to the brand. Let me let me ask you. Uh, your target are women, age 30, 50. They do not go to the salon, but they want to call or I'm talking about call or now, no care. Yes. They want to call or they has oh. How does it reflect on price? So in Japan, if you go to the salon, and I'm using these figures that I got from L'Oreal Professional, the average for Japan is about six to 7,000 euros. So if, if I just stood at 100 to one, $60, let's say. If you go to the drugstore, the price is for about 10 to $30. We're going to be doing our salon quality product at $30. We will we'll offer it at 40, but with subscription, it'll be about $30. So it's very competitively priced. And that's why I said it's half the cost of salons. And then we're at the high end of the pricing in the drugstores. And not only that, the value that we offer, it's not just pricing and the salon quality, but we add in the Plex Damage Care, which is kind of a plus alpha. You had two lines. One is the care, one is the color. Where, and uh, for what is my understanding, color is where most of the income revenue is coming. Am I right? Actually, to be um, frank, I, I said that I could make my numbers with Japan and hair color only if it succeeds. Um, Right now, I'm modeling them equally because we're just getting started the first few months sales, but over time, we will continually watch the mix. But in our case, with our factory costs and all, our gross margins are roughly the same, about 75 to 80%. So there's really no preference either way. It will partly depend on the market reaction. Um, so right now, I would just say it's 50-50 is the plan until we know more in the coming months. When you talk about 40 billion, that's the total addressable market or is the market that you believe you can serve? That's the total market. So that okay. would be skincare, makeup, um, hair care, other products. So if you, I could say, uh, please, please go. So it's actually very hard to get good data by, for example, hair dye only because most of the brands don't report it. Yeah. There's only a couple that are publicly listed. Most don't report it. So what I did was using those percentages of like 75% of women, 50% of older men, 25% of younger men, I took the Japanese population figures and came up with an estimate that more than 50 million people are dyeing their hair in Japan. And then according to many studies, it's roughly half at home, half um, at salons. And that's why I made the point that if you take the 25 million you're dying at home, if I get maybe 1% of them buying our $30 set eight times a year, okay. That 1% of the home segment will get me 60 million in sales. So that's just another way that I try to back into my target figure for year five. Well, how complicated is, in your opinion, to penetrate Japan market? Well, um, it's a very sophisticated and well-developed market. So, and obviously with the hair care, there's a lot of competition, but we are right on target in terms of being clean and sustainable. We have something which is very functional and sensory and it's award-winning. 
I'm confident that that can do. And that's probably more a matter of um, the advertising and promotion spend to convey those merits. The hair color is very different because, and that's one of the reasons we chose it is it's a very technical, it's hard to develop the products. It's quasi drug. Uh, as I said, Asian hair is different. So there's a lot of kind of barriers to entry from European and American brands. Also, if you go to the salon, the stylist typically doesn't tell you the consumer what brand they're using. So I refer to that as no name. And then on the bottom half of the market, and particularly in Japan, you have all the kind of cheap dyes in the, bo in the boxes. And you typically would see this in US, Europe, India, wherever you go, you know, the Maybelline, Revlon type mass market brands in a box. And those are very low quality. So that's why that, as I mentioned, there's a huge opportunity in the middle to do salon quality on the internet. And if we add in the Plex Damage Care. So this, I would say it's not as much a factor of spending, but just really um, addressing the benefits to the people who are already dying at home. So we're not gonna try and threaten salons and stylists. We're not competing against a lot of brands. It's really just convincing women who are already doing their own to trade up a little bit more, slightly higher pricing. My, my question is, in Europe, in the US, men are very focused now on the same, right? They yeah. call the hair. So what, about, what do you think? Can you, can you get this kind of market one day? Yes, you can. And there's already starting to be a few men's brands. For example, in the U.S., I think it's called a True, not True Men's, True Beard or something. But there, what you find with men's is kind of a lot of men want kind of the George Clooney look. It's called salt and pepper. <laughs> so it's not necessarily a true kind of cream type hair dye salon quality. It's more of you can get by with a semi-permanent kind of sitting on the surface of the hair. So it's slightly different. Or this past week, I, I was on a podcast with India. And I mm -hmm. learned, for example, that in India, most of the men go to salons to get their hair dyed, but most of the Indian women are doing it at home with henna. So again, well, market by market, there may be differences even for the men. It does. I want to close with the market. Me, uh, for what I can understand, Japan is a pretty strong market, even though it's not the biggest, it is market that you know very well. Why do not focus only on Japan and try to get as much as you can in terms of market share at the very beginning? I, I think, and this again is from my 30 years of experience, you know, I work with major brands like Revlon, Max Factor, you know, that had dominant shares in markets. But as a new startup brand, what I would rather do is a few products, a few SKUs, take a tiny slice of the markets and build out the infrastructure with two, three staff in 10 countries. And then I can gradually, as we, you know, become established, grow the share. But by going after a small slice, you kind of stay under the radar. I don't wake up the sleeping giants like, you know, Hoyo in Japan has 40% of the home market. You know, I don't threaten the salons and stylists. So I would rather get the brand working, get the repeat sales going, gradually start to cross sell and upsell to those customers. But in, in a short order, I can start, for example, China cross border. In China, it's interesting because remember I mentioned Japanese women at 75% penetration. 10 years ago, when I started looking at hair color in China, it was less than 10%. I've been talking to Tmall Taobao, it's now approaching 25, 30%. So the penetration is growing very rapidly in China. And then again, I looked at the population figures. Uh, they have 10 times the amount of women as Japan. So I'm going to try and make it work in Japan. China will be a quick second with growing penetration, 10 times the amount of people. And then I've already looked at the kind of top 10 home brands on Tmall and Taobao in China. And uh, their pricing is a bit lower than 30, but we think that the trends are positive that 30 will be supportable, very viable. 
and I looked at their social media, they're kind of not doing much. So I think there's a wonderful opportunity as China is their second market. So again, I hear your point about growing share, but that's kind of let's call it phase two. I'd rather get a slice in a few markets going and have that working and then go back and really try to go for share within each of the markets we're in. Would you like to close with a message to investors? Why investing in your sky? Okay. So again, I've tried to mention that we have a management team, 20 to 30 years of relevant domain experience. We've done a good job of picking the first products and markets set up with our factories in the e-commerce. And so now we're raising a pre-seed three round where the majority of the funds will be used for advertising and promotion. And if our idea works, if I make the figures I showed on my uh, five-year P&L at that valuation, if you were to participate now, you might realize, and again, this is hypothetical, a 50 to 60 times return on this pre-seed round. Steve, thank you so much for coming to Beastalk. Thank you, Max. It's been a very good pleasure for me. I hope in Equity Match we can have to get this funding and keep your company going and be successful. Thank, thank you. you. My I appreciate your support.